Hi, I'm Jack and welcome back because Titans season three has just wrapped up today and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the third season of the show. And I will answer the question, was this season worth it? But before I do, don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the, the description below. And it is a spoiler review. So if you have not seen this season yet, go watch it on HBO Max and then come back here when you're done. And with that said, let's get started. Season 3 follows the Titans as they travel to Gotham City after Jason Todd has been murdered by the Joker. However, as the Titans make their stay in Gotham, the crime rate begins to increase and the Titans have their hands full while taking on villains like Jonathan Crane and more. I was anticipating season three not just because titans is a guilty pleasure show to me but it's also because they're now moving from dc universe to hbo max and so i could tell right away that there's an increase in budget and just what how they're going to do things are going to be a little bit differently so i was wondering what they're going to do with the season especially after season two and it's safe to say that i thought season three is the best season the show has had thus far the visuals look a lot better. The writing is a lot better this time around as well. More into all these things I will do. But I thought season three is probably the best season yet of this show. It feels the most Titans-like out of the three. And it's a lot more consistent. Now, kicking off the positives, I thought I really liked how the story feels a lot more consistent this time. Because one of my issues with season two was that you have way too many characters in there. Like you have Dick Grayson, you have Corey, you have Rachel, you have Beast Boy, you have Hawk, Dove, Donna Troy, Jason Todd, Superboy, and all of them. You had way too many characters in season two. And so not everybody gets a lot of development, like Beast Boy per se. And so with season three, I really liked how this time they really... They shortened the cast and they focused a lot more on the main story because in season two, it was all kind of all over the place. But in season three, everything ties into that main story with Red Hood and Jonathan Crane and the Titans being in Gotham. And so far throughout these 13 episodes we've had, everything ties into those storylines. And I really like it because it makes the show feel a lot more smoother than what it was before. And it makes things a little more interesting and a little more engaging. So I truly appreciated how this season they finally gave us a much more consistent story for the show. Second thing that I want to bring up are that the Titans, we finally get to see a lot more of the Titans being Titans. Because while the show is called Titans, I get a little frustrated that in those first two seasons you don't get to see a lot of Titans being Titans together. And that kind of bums me out because it feels like we're just watching a show about Dick Grayson and every other character is just a side character. So this season, they really listen to that and they're finally giving us a Titans show. While they still have some Bat Family elements throughout, like Barbara Gordon being involved and Jonathan Crane here and now introducing Tim Drake, everything... We still get to have a show where you still get to see a lot more Titans being Titans, especially in the fight sequence between them and Gizmo's team in episode one, especially in episode seven and episode eight and all that. And I really, I really dug that because I've been wanting to see the Titans be together and work together a whole lot more. And this season, we do get that for the most part. Third thing I want to bring up are the action sequences still look terrific. I think this is easily the best looking season of the three and the action is easily the best done here. They're edited a lot better and the choreography looks really great, especially for the Nightwing fight sequences like in episode one and episode seven and even episode 13. I love the fight sequences on the show. They're really, they're great. And they really gave delivered hard on these action sequences throughout this season. Another thing I want to bring up is I thought the acting is good for the most part. I really liked Branson Thwaites' dick. I think he does really great with what he has to work with. And I really liked Anna Diop as Starfire and Ryan Potter as Beast Boy. And while the whole cast is great, I do think I really liked Karan Walters as Jason Todd. Because this time he's not Jason Todd Robin, 
but he's Jason Todd Red Hood. And one of the things I was really wondering to see how, what was going to happen was how is season three going to make Red Hood work? And acting wise, I thought Curran did a great job as this character. I really liked seeing a much more darker and a much more uh, antagonistic side of the character. So I really liked seeing Curran try to do something new as this character and pose much more of a threat to the Titans rather than an ally like in those first two seasons. So I really, I really like the acting here and especially from Alan Richson as Hawk and Minka Kelly as Dove, even though this is sadly, I think, their last season because, again, I warned you with spoilers, they killed off Hawk at the end of episode three and I was so shocked. I couldn't, it was just the fact that the whole episode was like them in a race against time to save Hawk. And in the end, they were so close and they lose him. And that was just so heartbreaking to see because I really liked Hawk's character on this show. And so seeing him leave the way he did and seeing them wrap up his character, I thought they did a very good job handling his exit on the show, especially as Alan Richardson is now going to be playing Jack Reacher for an Amazon Prime series of that character. So I really liked how they sent off his character and then Dove left the next episode I will get more into that later, but I really liked how they handled it. Next up, I really liked the setting of Gotham City because originally they wanted San Francisco to still be the setting of season three, but because of the pandemic and then when they were able to film again, they just couldn't, they didn't want to do San Francisco, especially in the winter. So they thought, let's do Gotham City. And I thought that actually worked well. I wouldn't mind if they did San Francisco again this season, but I liked Gotham because it makes the location feel much darker and much more like a much a dangerous city where these heroes could be in risk of dying. And I really dug it because well, the motto of the poster was heroes will rise or Gotham will fall. And I really like that for this season, especially as once Jason died in the first few minutes of the first episode, it just sets the tone and sets the mood for the rest of the season. And it's a dark season for the most part as well. Not like season one edgy, but yeah, because it got them, you could tell they're not playing around here. And I thought they did. I really enjoyed the setting, especially the locations they went to like GCPD and Wayne Manor and stuff. Even the Batcave looks amazing. Hey, especially I think this is a different Batcave look than what we got in the first two seasons. So I think they really use this new HBO Max budget to build more sets and more to it. And I thought, I love how the Batcave looks on the show. And so there is that. Another thing I want to bring up is the dynamic between Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon. We got introduced to the Titans world version of Barbara Gordon played by Savannah Welch. And I really enjoyed that because... While we don't get to see, sadly, Dick and Starfire's romance continue, that takes a back seat. I really liked seeing Dick and Barbara work with each other, especially when it comes to the whole who is Red Hood, stopping Jonathan Crane, and I just enjoyed a lot of their scenes, especially in episode six, where you have like flashbacks of what they were, and this is before the Titans and all that, and... I really enjoyed what I saw from them. They have great chemistry with one another. And I really enjoyed their scenes that they have together. And it is easily a highlight of the season for me. Especially as I love characters in the Bat family and all that. So that is a highlight. Another highlight I want to bring up is Tim Drake. Oh boy, is the actor that played him, Jay Lee Kurgo, if I'm not correcting. Really liked him. I really liked his Tim Drake on the show, especially as you had him in that first episode, and then you see him more as the season progresses. And I love how he ties into this story. And I just love his dynamic with Donna Troy, who was resurrected from the dead after her death in season two. And I love their dynamic with each other and how Tim, how you see how much he really wants to be a hero and how much he loves Batman and all that. And I just, I really liked everything they did with his character. And I'm really excited to see where he goes from here because I have a feeling he's definitely coming back next season as Robin. I hope he becomes Robin next season because 
they now need a new Robin. Dick Grayson is Nightwing. Jason Todd's Red Hood. So, yeah, Tim Drake needs to be the next Robin now. So, I really enjoyed that, especially in episode nine. Oh, one of the best episodes of both the season and the whole show. Loved it. Loved him in that, ep in that, in that episode. Same as Connor Leslie as Wonder Girl. And even the one more last appearance from Alan Richson Hawk, who appeared. And that whole episode was about like the underworld and how they're trying to go back into the real world and all that. Love that. The cinematography in that episode is great. Love the black and white look of it all. And you see Rachel try to bring her back. And speaking of that, it was interesting to me that they decided that when Rachel left for Themyscira at the end of season two, they don't actually bring her back until the last half of the season. And that kind of shocked me because I was like, she is a main character. So the fact that you don't see her until near the last half of the season, that's interesting. But I think on one hand it works because I feel like they didn't give Rachel as much to do in season two like she did in that first season. And there was already kind of like characters who need development and stories that have to be told that ties into the season three storyline. So I feel like it makes sense that she didn't have as much time as she usually does on a season of the show. But I liked what they did with her. Her power levels are growing and I'm really curi curious to see where does season four go from here. Um, and then next up, of course, I thought the show easily had the best finale of the three because I thought the first season had, it was a good episode, but I did not like it as a finale. It just didn't feel like an end. It felt like the penultimate episode. And then season two was just a very mixed, just a mixed bag for me because I loved seeing Dick become Nightwing at last, but I did not like how they wrapped up the Deathstroke storyline, the Cadmus storyline, and especially how it just felt really rushed and I didn't like how they killed off Donna Troy. It's easily one of my least favorite deaths I've seen on a TV show. And so I was really um, curious to see how season three was gonna continue. And luckily it's a good ending. I think it could have been better. But I liked we got to see Titans be Titans. It wrapped up the story and all that. There are a few minor complaints I have here and there. But yeah, overall, this is the very first season of the show to have a solid ending, in my opinion. And this is the season just it hits the right notes for what it did in the end. So overall, it managed to wrap up this season in a good place. I also really liked what we got of Donna Troy this season, especially after season two. However, the season, while it is the best season, does have some issues here and there. While it resolved most of my problems with those first two seasons, there are still a few issues that still remain over its transfer to HBO Max. The first thing I'm going to mention is I thought Blackfire storyline felt wasted to me because at the end of season two, the before the credits started to roll, you had Blackfire teased that she is now coming. She's on Earth and she's coming to kill Starfire, which sets up a pos a fight between the Titans and Blackfire. And I was really excited to see that. But when they started announcing that the season was going to have Red Hood, Jonathan Crane and Barbara Gordon and Tim Drake and all that, I was nervous about how they were going to handle Blackfire because I thought as a Titans fan and as somebody who loves the Teen Titans cartoon and all that, I was really looking forward to seeing Blackfire be a villain for the season. And sadly, they did not do that. And it kind of bummed me out because I was like, you have a character like Blackfire who could have been a big threat to the Titans. And instead... She is just there to kind of push Starfire's story forward. And they make Blackfire a Titan at some point. And then in episode 10, when they have that storyline where the Titans are now looked as criminals and they failed to turn themselves in at some point and then they split up. They did something with Starfire where it made me feel like they're going to make her a villain in those next few episodes. And that didn't happen. And I was let down by it because I was like... They had something going with Blackfire before the season and then it just, it, they didn't use it because everything ties into what happens with Jonathan Crane and Red Hood and that 
was a bummer because I feel like for a Titans show, I feel like they should have just went with Blackfire for that second half of the season. Because then that also brings me to another issue. And I felt like the Jonathan Crane storyline felt dragged to me because it was, I feel like they should have resolved that by episode seven and eight. But by the time you get to episode nine and those final few episodes, it just felt like they're trying to stretch it out just to keep this going for a little bit longer because then they had the whole no man's land and Gotham and then you had the Titans looked at as criminals and they got separated again. And that just made me like, and even with Jonathan Crane, I thought I liked what they were doing with him at first, but I just started to like him less as the season progressed because then it was like, he's barely being Scarecrow and I just don't entirely get why he wants to do what he's doing. I don't get his motivation. And, but then it also brings down the Red Hood story to me because I loved what they did with Red Hood in the first half of the season. But then after episode eight, it just felt like his character has no direction. And so I couldn't tell where he's going or what they're trying to do with Red Hood. It's like, it's like at first in the first three episodes, they set him up to be this grave threat that the Titans have to face. And they were doing something really good with him. But then they revealed that, oh, Scarecrow is just the main, the mastermind behind all this. And he was just a pawn. And it just kind of ruined the impact of those first few episodes because it just makes it like Jason could not do these things himself. He's, he needs to grow up from being Robin. And so the fact that you had those first three episodes make it like he's doing this himself, only to reveal that he's just a pawn in Scarecrow's game, it just doesn't quite land for me. And I think even in the finale, I thought they kind of, they wasted Red Hood in those final few episodes. And it's a shame because Curran does a really great job portraying this character. And I really liked what I saw of him as Jason and as Red Hood. And it's a shame that in the final few episodes, they just could not stick the landing with that. And because it's a main part of the season, it just sort of holds the season back from being even greater. Another thing I want to bring up is this season is still heavily reliant on the Bat family. And I feel like they need to just stop focusing on the Bat family stuff and finally focus on the Titans. Because this season, you get a lot of Dick Grayson. You get a lot of Jason Todd. You get a lot of Barbara Gordon. You get a good chunk of Tim Drake in that middle to last half. And it just feels like the show is trying to be a Bat family show but it's called Titans. And I feel like they need to focus more on Starfire and Beast Boy and Raven and Superboy. And I wish they got more focus because the season focused so much on the Bat Family side of things, even though we're in Gotham. And it's just like, they're cool. I do like them and all, but I want to see Titans be Titans. And the Bat Family takes up so much of that. So I really hope that next season they finally move on from that and they finally focus on giving us a Titans show 100%. Another thing I do want to bring up for this as well is the final few episodes minus that finale. I felt like after episode 9, they went with this whole storyline where, oh, the Titans are criminals and they split up after that great fight sequence between the Titans and the GCPD. And it's a bummer because one of my biggest issues with season two was the final five episodes where they decide, let's just split the team up. And I was like, are you serious? You're splitting them up? And making it worse was that the characters don't have proper motivation it just doesn't feel right and then in season three while they did not disband luckily they still split them up and i'm like the last thing the titans should be doing during something like this is to split up and so after that they don't see each other again until like the, the finale and i was like i was just like are you kidding me right now it's just they were they were doing so well with these first nine episodes they were doing so well and then that happened and then it's just like great well now it feels like we're back to the usual season one and two stuff where every character is off doing their own thing 
while this is happening and it's a letdown in that aspect because they were again not disbanded which i'm happy they did not do but you split them up I, at this point i don't want to see them split up anymore it's happened way too many times to be honest with you so next season they really need to make sure that they stay with each other 100 percent of the time and then another thing a plot line, not a big plot line, that I did not like was the romance between Blackfire and Superboy. That felt off to me, and it just it felt cringeworthy. And it's just weird because Superboy, mentally, he's only like a little kid or like a baby or something. Only mentally, but you, they he, they pair him up with Blackfire, and that just feels weird to me. I just never once cared for it and it felt unnecessary. It just felt like it was there to give Blackfire a reason to be there and for Superboy to have screen time in. I love Superboy, especially in season two with what he had, but I didn't like that p romance thing. It just felt weird. It felt forced to me. And it made in episode 12... It made Connor unlikable in episode 12 because then he says things like, oh, screw the Titans. And he does stuff that it's like, I just don't like seeing Superboy do something like this. And I get why, but it just doesn't make sense to me. And I just did not care for that at all. I could have done without that whole romance um, idea. Oh, and... If you didn't like how Donna Troy was killed, which I don't either, they did the same thing with Dick Grayson where in episode 11, he fights Red Hood and he goes out there all by himself. Superboy offers to help him and Dick Grayson's like, no, I'm doing this myself. You staying here. And he just, he basically puts, he gets, gives Connor kryptonite dust and it weakens him in crypto so he could go out against Red Hood all by himself. And it was going fine. Nightwing had the drop on him. He beat him. And then people started showing up. And at some point, he told this kid who was shooting, had a gun at him. Hey, like, point it, put it down. I'm not going to hurt you. And so Nightwing walks towards Red Hood. And the kid starts shooting at him. And what does Nightwing do? He walks forward and gets the, the, the same guy with the gun shoots him twice and Nightwing does not dodge the bullets and then he gets shot in the neck just like that and I'm like as literally the first Robin Nightwing leader of the Titans and especially being trained by Batman you're telling me that he just doesn't dodge those bullets and he ends up getting shot in the neck and that kills him like that just that's bad writing to me I literally did not like that at all especially that whole episode just was like not a fan of it and i really didn't like it because i'm like it's like it's it also makes dick sometimes a bad leader because he's supposed to be this great character this leader who leads the titans in the battle but in this episode when he literally has the titans to back him up he has superboy but for some reason, he just decides to poison him with kryptonite so he can go out by himself and get himself killed. That is such a bad idea. And I just wish that Dick would just acknowledge he has the Titans by his side. He doesn't have to go out doing everything all by himself. And that was a big frustration. Not as frustrating as what happened with Donna Troy last season, but still, I did not enjoy that. And it made me very frustrated that they did that with Dick because I thought we were at the point where he's done being brooding. He's done trying to do things himself. He's, he's done being that dick like in the first two seasons. And he's like in the start of the season, like I thought that he's now this new dick. He's happy. He loves being Nightwing and being leader of the Titans. And then this happens. It just makes me like questioning that sometimes the character motivations and development just does not make sense. And I wish they did a much better job on it. Because while the writing did improve for the most part this season, it still has some of those things that they just continuously do on the show. And I do not enjoy that. And then one more thing. In episode four, one of my least favorites of the season, I didn't like that you they had Hank died 
at the end of the last episode. And it devastates the Titans in that last few minutes. But then they only mourn for him for like four to five minutes. And then boom, it's just gone. I'm a, and I wish they focused more on spending time with the Titans reeling over the fact that one of their own former members just killed Hawk, one of their own. And it was a bummer because they could have done something really great with them trying to handle it, especially as in a place like Gotham City. But they just glossed over it to push the story forward. And I didn't like it because then whenever they do talk about the fact that Hank has died, it's only in episode nine between him and Donna and Tim in the afterlife. Or it's just like with Dick and Jason every few minutes, that's it. And we didn't get to spend much time with the Titans reeling over the fact that Jason is Red Hood. He's not who he used to be. And that he just they just lost one of their own and they just didn't mourn for very long. And it just felt like a wasted opportunity. Before I give you guys my overall thoughts, here's my ranking of all 13 episodes of season three from worst to best. In last place is episode 11, The Call is Coming from Inside the House. Next up is episode 12, Prodigal. Next up is episode 4, Blackfire. Next up is episode 10, Troubled Water. Next up is episode 6, Lady Vic. Next up is episode 13, Purple Rain. Next up is episode 5, Lazarus. Next up is episode 1, Barbara Gordon. Next up is episode 2, Red Hood. Next up is episode 9, Souls. Now these next three are interchangeable, just so you guys know. In third place is episode 8, Home. In second place is episode 7, 51%. And at the top of the list is episode 3, Hank and Dove. Overall, season 3 is definitely the best season Titans has had thus far. The move to HBO Max fixed a lot of issues with the past two seasons, but still left a few hanging. So as all of this is said, I'm going to give Titans season 3 a B. And I recommend it for fans of the show only. Doesn't quite reach its full potential, but it's definitely the best season of the show. Anyway, those are my thoughts on season three of Titans. What did you guys think of the season? I'd love to hear it down below in the comments section. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. And I really am looking forward to seeing what they do with season four from here. And thank you guys. And I hope you guys will subscribe for more. Where I come from, you come after family, we show no mercy.